barely conscious. He needs immediate medical attention. Come on, yeah. Christmas Day, and Yatesy races to a swimmer, drowning in backpacker's rip. The waves are just going over the back of his head. He was standing, but I could see in his face, you know, you just tell when someone's sort of freaking out. It's amazing that people can drown in, you know, water you can pretty much nearly stand up in down here. Put your head forward a little bit more. Lay your head in between your legs. That's it, just like that. And keep the breathing up really slow and deep. When Troy went up to him first, he, he probably felt OK. Try it up. OK. Not dizzy? I too much alcohol. Oh, there we go. There's... And then five minutes later, he, he was worse, and this got worse and worse. This is what sort of happens. The patient said that he uh, breathed in a lot of water while he was out the back. And the concern for us is that he might have secondary drowning. That's when someone follows a lot of seawater and it actually sits in their lungs. And a few days later, you could, you could die from water on your lungs. You know, that's, that's why we take it really seriously. He was losing his colour and, you know, he was fading fast and just gave him some oxygen. I thought it might have made him feel better. And oxygen's like medicine after five minutes. His colour came back. It was awesome. I'm just, uh, the people are very strong. I, I was uh, very tired, you know? And I, I, lost my, I lost my control. You know, where I come, uh, we don't have, uh, have the sea. It's the sea. Two tourists are caught in a rip, but there are no lifeguards nearby. Yeah. Troy breaks protocol and leaves the tower unattended. Troy is beaten by Beardy, who was heading to the change rooms when he spotted the man. Yeah, Beardy's gone out. Ah! Yeah, screaming help. The man is swept into the impact zone. It's Beardy's job to get him out of there. As I get to him, pretty big set comes and we got pumped. And I was just lucky that somehow the board didn't rip out of my hands. We could hear him screaming help from up there. In saying that, we, we did get him on the board pretty quickly. And we got a pretty good wave in. Unfortunately, he was in a bit of a bad way when we got to the beach. He was exhausted. He, he was literally fighting for his life in the water. You good? He was sick, he was, he was a little bit vomity. Water on the lungs can cause secondary drowning. <laughs> Oxygen therapy in his case, yeah, it's pretty important we get that on pretty quickly. Mm. Did you swallow any water or are you just exhausted? I don't know. You don't know? One, two, three, go. He had nothing left. He couldn't even lift his own body weight. And you know when someone's in that condition that it was a close call. Yeah. Just try to breathe through this. So you, you did swallow a bit of water? Yeah, OK. What we're going to do, we're going to get an ambulance to come down. But what they do is they'll take you to hospital, and they get something, they, they stick it down your throat, and they'll suck all the water out for you. Murrah's friend witnessed just how quickly things happened. Uh, we were having really good time there. And as soon as, yeah, that was pretty deep then, so yeah, I got, I got so scared. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah give him a hand on the back of the bar. Hey, well, thank you. Even in the tower, he was in a bad way. You feel sick in the tummy at all? No. No? It's not good. I feel like somebody hit me. Dizzy? Yeah. Headache? OK, I'll that in. Nice deep breaths. Thank you. Oh, hello. Drag out of water. Did you swallow any water? Yes, but I think it was less than a cup. Slow your breathing down, mate, all right? Murad is off to hospital for a full assessment. I kind of knew that he had swallowed water. I saw the waves breaking over his head, and he's very lucky. Lifeguards can see trouble in backpackers' rip. 
but the situation remains unclear. I went down there with Chapo quickly, and when we got there, Yatesy was in. Central, Queen has just gone into. I actually got out to him quicker than I thought because I was actually at this stage in the rig. A man, the brother of the woman on the beach, clings to a surfboard. He's been rescued by Bondi's resident photographer, Eugene. Well, if Eugene wasn't there, we would have been diving to, to get him. By the time I got to him, we'd been sucked into this bank and it was sucking up sort of over the top of us and that guy was in big trouble. The man is on the verge of losing consciousness. I picked him up and he was just a dead weight. He was just floppy, his legs weren't doing anything. It will be close to impossible for Yatesy to get a dead weight swimmer to shore in the crashing surf. Someone doesn't look that good, eh, Harry's? This guy could hardly hold onto Eugene's board, let alone get up on the board. Yates, he gets to a sandbank where he can lift the man onto the board. Was that all it was, him? He's drowning. He looks like he's still drowning. So I've got this guy on the board. He's pretty much a dead weight. You know, as far as I, I could have known, he might have stopped breathing on the way in. He was that bad. Pradeep is on holiday from Nepal, barely conscious. He needs immediate medical attention. Come up here. Lifeguard Quinn is a qualified paramedic. You know, I would have been confident with anyone on the sand, but it's just that little bit more when someone like Quinn is there. When you saw his face in the end, he was he looked green. Those eyes, you know, like when you're close to death and your face changes and your eyes change, you know that he was absolutely on his last breath. Did you take on some water just then? <laughs> if his condition deteriorates, then you know, you'll definitely need a trip to hospital. I'm just going to put this on you for, for a little bit, get your breath back. Because of the, the colour, the green in his face, you can tell that he's been without oxygen for a little while. So he's got a deficit there, and putting the oxygen on him was just to try and get him breathing properly again and get some uh, circulation back for him. Bit of a tough little episode there. All right, you're in, you're in a lot of trouble there. When I saw that he was in a real bad way, like his eyes were rolling, he was going under, his head was really low in the water. I could tell he just had no idea how to swim. He looked to me, you know, seconds away from dying. After five minutes of observation... And he said he definitely has taken on a fair bit of water, so... Just... Quinn determines that Pradeep must go to hospital. Did he swallow water? OK. It's the difference between inhaling and swallowing. The soil that goes into your stomach, if you inhale it, you know when you do that, it goes into your lungs, and that's where the problems are. My job is to keep them alive until the ambulance gets there, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good sound when you hear the siren coming down Camel Parade, you know they're not far away. Here they are now, yeah? Yeah, they're coming now. All right, I'll meet them at... Pradeep remains at risk of further complications. I just want to listen to your breathing, man. They've put the stethoscope on his lungs and he's probably heard water in his lungs, which is instant hospital. Now, he must have been in a bad way for them to take him straight away. We ready to go? The Nepalese guy should buy a lottery ticket. It's very, very lucky. As close as you'll ever want to come to drowning. 